Good morning, everyone. It's Linda back again. Today is my very favorite day because we're going to talk about goodness, grief, water me. And what that means is looking after ourselves, self care. What is it that we're going to do that's going to help us move forward with our lives and not get us stuck in our grief or in a victim type role? So we want to kind of move towards a survivor role. What our ultimate goal, this is Roxy, by the way. I put Roxy in my video today because she is a big part of my own self-care. And she hangs out with me every day on my floor, behind me, and she loves getting treats. So I don't know how long she's gonna stay there. <laughs> okay, so really what we wanna do is turn our grief into post-traumatic growth. Now, a lot of us haven't heard about what post-traumatic growth is, but what it is, is we turn our loss into some sort of growth that really puts our lives in a whole new direction. And it changes us. It changes who we are. It changes our purpose. It changes our being. And often it uh, can lead us towards a life that we never even thought was imaginable. So we can learn a lot. From our grief and especially like I talked about yesterday our biggest cheerleader up in the sky our loved one who is up there rooting for us they are like we want this person to succeed we want this person to be happy to be joyful to be peaceful and I'm up here watching and I don't want to look down and see my loved one sad forever we're gonna be sad for a little while and there'll always be some sadness in there but what they really want to see is us blossom. So you have to kind of find those right healthy activities that fit with you. Um, not what fits with other people, not what other people tell you to do. You have to find the activities that are right for you. Personally, I, I, I used to go to the gym a lot when I was younger. I'm in my 50s now, and that's a poor excuse. But I don't really like hanging out at the gym. But I like to exercise. Um, I like to walk. Roxy, who's my little walking companion and my husband. Um, I love walking. I love cooking, eating properly. Um, I have exercise that I'll do at home. I have like this 20 minute workout and some weights and stuff like that. And this is, I like to do things on my own schedule. Other people, they love going to the gym. They love going to classes. Some of us are participating online for different classes. There's just so many different options. So it's just really just fit, finding that right fit for you because if you enjoy it, you're going to keep doing it. If you're forcing yourself to do something, chances are you're not going to keep doing it. So you want to find out what, what kind of clicks with you. So the other thing is don't put a schedule on your recovery. There, there is not really any schedule. The only thing you can really do is make a commitment to yourself. If you're committed to moving forward and moving through your grief and processing it and doing all these things that we're talking about in a way that's right for you, then it's going to happen anyhow. So I know there's, I see posting all the time, you know, there's no schedule and it's true. There's no schedule, but you still need to make a commitment, make a commitment to you, make a commitment for your family, for your loved one, and even for your loved one that's watching over you. So the first thing we wanna do is reduce the stress. Stress is what really kind of tears it all down. And if we don't kind of find a good handle on our stress, then it, everything's gonna just not fall into place the way we want it to. And life can be pretty stressful right now. And especially with the COVID thing going on, there's a lot of extra stress added onto our lives. So have a good look at what it is that you can change. Some things we just can't change. And we have to find ways that we can cope with it. And if we're having a hard time coping with it alone, then we need to have some extra support and some help to help us through. But re look at ways that you can reduce stress because there could be possibly a lot of stress in your life that doesn't have to be. Maybe there's people that are causing too much stress. Maybe it's too much social media. Lots of things that we can kind of look at and, and reduce. Now you want to stay positive. 
know there's going to be a light no matter what. And if you continue to stay positive and just know that it's coming, even though you can't see it, you could be in a very dark tunnel right now and you just can't see any light, feels very hopeless. But if you keep an open mind and you watch for it and you focus on these things that I'm talking about, it's going to happen. It's going to come. That light is going to come and you'll look back and you'll see how it is that you survived and what were the things that you did that got you through. Expressing your feelings is really important when you're grieving. Holding things in is the worst thing you can possibly do, even saying our person's name. Now, I, I remember when Barry first died, I had to tell a lot of people what happened. I had to call people, I had to call family, I had to call people back in, in Nova Scotia. And each time I talked about it a little bit, I think I was processing it also a little bit more. So it's just a very, it starts right from the very beginning. And by expressing what's going on, it really helps us process it as well. Holding things back in the back of our mind doesn't really get rid of anything. It goes back into a folder, it stays there, it stews away, it eats away at our soul. So make sure that you really express what it is that you're feeling and what your fears are. Like what are those top fears right now? And if you can identify what those fears are, then you can address them. If we can't identify them, or we're not even taking the time to sit down and really think about it, then these are other things that are gonna be sitting in the back of our subconscious mind, stewing away and eating away at our happiness. Forgiveness is a big thing when we lose someone. So forgive, forgive yourself and forgive others and also forgive the, anything that maybe the person that you love that passed, um, anything that was left unsaid or undone at the time. Forgiveness doesn't mean that we're saying, oh, the behavior was okay. What it means is that we're not going to allow this incident to impact our, our life and our soul and our mental health moving forward. And it's like a huge release when you can feel it. Like you can, I've, I have forgiven um, people in my past, especially I think about my ex-husband from drug abuse and, and alcoholism. And... I don't feel any anger towards him. What happened was terrible, but I don't feel any anger. And that's the feeling that you need to have. You need to get to the point where you're able to release that anger. And sometimes it really means expressing it. The other thing for some self-care is write it down, journalize, get out your notebook. It's just such a wonderful way. That's how I ended up writing a book in the first place. It's because when Barry first died, I just needed to write it down type it out wherever it is, pen, paper, however it is that you feel most comfortable, but just get it out of you, get it down on a piece of paper. And for me, I kind of tucked it away. Some of the pieces that I wrote in the beginning are actually in my book. Um, and I felt like this way I could kind of get it out of me, put it on a piece of paper. I didn't really want to forget all the events, but I didn't also want to remember them every day either. So I knew that if I did that and tucked it away, I could just pull it out maybe years later, maybe never, but it was still there. So it just gave me that little bit of extra security. The other thing is you don't want to be the victim. So many of us get caught in this victim, poor me, poor me, why me? And the other question is why not you? This happens, things happen, people pass away, things happen in life. And it happens to all of us. None of us are going to get no, a free ticket out of this. We're going to feel like a victim at times. And a victim definitely comes before survivor. If you are feeling like you're a victim and the poor me, poor me, not only is it really hard on yourself, but it's really hard on other people around you. Sometimes it can push them away a little bit because there's just it feels like there's just so much negativity so you want to be the light. You want to become the light. You can feel like a victim now and maybe everything is still very soon and very raw and it's okay. I have felt like a victim before too. I got the support and found some light and, and I was able to, to move through it. But create your own survivor story. Don't get stuck. Make sure you create that your own survivor story and 
listen to what it is that I'm telling you as to how you can kind of get there. Think about times before when you were, before your loss, like what were things that you enjoyed? What made you feel important? What makes you feel important in this world? What made you feel important maybe 10 years ago? Think back in, in time when you felt happy and think about the, the reasons why. Even moving forward, things that might have made us happy back then might be different now as we age and our priorities change. But maybe you can kind of link the two and just kind of write it down. Write down what makes you feel important and it will help kind of give you some directions. The other thing I found really helped was helping others. There is just some sort of, I don't know, it's just a feeling that comes over you when you know that you have taken the time and given someone else some of your own time and you've served, that it comes, it just comes back to you in this feeling of doing something really good for someone else. It, it just changes the universe. I believe that it changes, you know, how your path goes by serving and, and helping others. So if you can help others do that, make sure you look after yourself first, but you can also kind of help people alongside of your own self-care. If we sit back and we think, okay, well, I have to wait till I'm completely at this point before I can even look at anyone else. Well, I kind of, I when this first happened to me, I, I remember kind of focusing on some other important people in my lives that were going through stuff. And I really think that it actually helped me as well. It's important to meet new people. Um, if you have a lot of people in your life, you feel like I don't have any room for any more, that's fine. But if you feel like you have room for more, there's lots of ways of doing that, especially after loss, because there were a big group of people. There's, like I said, there's no free ticket here. We're all going to lose someone at some point in our lives and we all need support and often we can support each other. So don't be afraid to join some groups or I know COVID has kind of put a stop on the face to face stuff, but there's a lot of virtual things going on right now and meet new people. Come meet me. Um, I have been offering first sessions at no cost, um, depending on space. I don't know how quickly I can book people in, but right now with the COVID, um, I do have some space and I am offering that first session at no cost. And it's up to you to take action. If you don't take action, nothing's gonna change. It's all about you. And it's all about what, it, what you want for your future and, you know, in order to make that happen, you really have to take action. Even if you don't really 100% know where it's going to take you. It's sometimes that those little actions are only baby steps. And it could be just a little tiny seed that you need to grow. And maybe in the beginning, that little bit of action is just putting some water on it every day. Taking that little bit of time to make sure that you're stepping in the right direction. Now, when I was going through a really difficult time, when I was a single mom, I did what I called a, a vision board. And I still have it. And this, this board is probably, I don't know, it's probably 12, 13 years old now, and it's getting kind of beat up. And it was the funnest thing I ever did because it helped give me some direction. And so I went out and I found magazines and flyers and, you know, I, um, you know, whatever it was I could get my hands on. Nowadays, mostly everything is online. And I cut it out, it was like I was shopping. And I had this great feeling of achieving as if I already had it. So I cut it all out and I put pasted it on my board. And um, another friend of mine, we were kind of into this together and I was at a really low spot when I was doing this. I really didn't know what my vision was, but I just knew that I had to be doing little steps every day and I wanted to, I wanted to move forward. And so I can say, even though there was absolutely nothing on this board at the time, that everything on my vision board has happened. I posted it in a place, I looked at it every day and everything on there, I can actually put a check in the box. And when everything was glued on there, there was nothing. The, the slate was clean. 
So great idea to kind of start pushing toward in a positive direction. Okay, so that was my topic on, on self-care or water me. So that comes back to the little seed. If you got that little seed, you need to make sure that you keep watering it and, and growing and allow yourself to be open. Open up your eyes and open up your heart to new opportunities. Um, okay, so remember to share the post. And if you share the post, you'll get in for the draw that I will pull at some point tomorrow. Part of my self-care is I'm not actually going to be working tomorrow. I'm going to be spending it with my daughter and my granddaughter and getting ready for another granddaughter's birthday party on Saturday. But I will make sure that I do take the time and put this on grief relief at uh, Linda Marshall tomorrow, the, the group. Um, so share it. Make sure your name gets in the jar. If it's already in there, it's already in there. If you share it again, it's going to go in again. If you share it to two two groups of people, uh, groups, whatever, by, you know, then I'm going to make sure that your name gets in there because hopefully yours is going to be the one that gets drawn. And that will be it for today. Remember that... Um, my virtual launch special 995 for the book is still going on. So if you want to order it, it's www.griefreliefcoaching.ca. Um, and I would love to hear from you. Take care and I hope you have a great weekend. I won't be doing the regular video tomorrow, but I will be doing the draw. But on Monday, I will start again with a new topic. Have a great weekend. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.